digital, real estate, and your IRA. Hey everyone, Adam Bergman here, tax attorney, founder of IRA Financial. And on today's Adam Talks, I want to talk to you about the concept or the actual product, tangible product of digital real estate, what it is, is it worth anything? How the heck do you actually buy it? And can you buy it in an IRA? So pretty cool podcast for you today. Um, kind of been looking at digital real estate for a bit. My, my kids have kind of talked to me about it. Uh, they're big Fortnite gamers. So uh, I've kind of gotten some proximity to the you know, concept of buying or using a digital platform to purchase a good or a service. So it kind of leads to this next phase is, hey, you can game. Now we know there's decentralized potential for metaverse, web 3.0, which I'll get to in this podcast how can we take it a step further? Can we actually, is people going to actually buy real estate on a platform or a game? Does it make sense? Do we have any control over this? This is just code, right? It's not hard dirt <laughs> that you can see and touch. Uh, there's an unlimited amount of space, I guess. You can just create more parcels of land on this platform. Whereas if you're buying an apartment in New York City, there's only so much space available to, to keep building. So um, anyways, we'll tackle all those subjects in uh, today's podcast. So um, buckle up and um, let's get going. So what is digital real estate? Okay, so just basically to keep it simple, it's everything you see online. Could potentially be real estate, whether you're buying a website, a domain name, that is all deemed digital real estate or a digital asset. But I'm going to be talking about actual digital plots of real estate. So not just a URL, you can go on GoDaddy and buy a URL for 12 bucks a year or buy a website. Um, I'm talking about actual plots of space. I don't want to call it land or real estate, but it is digital real estate that you can buy. So it's basically any land or any parcel located on a metaverse slash digital platform. Okay, it's like physical property, they're situated in, in certain areas and you could locate them generally uh, based on virtual reality or just going on the platform, which we'll get to uh, in a sec. You can own it, you can monetize it. We'll get into NFTs, how that works. There's platforms like Decentraland and CryptoVoxel and Sandbox. Probably Decentraland and Sandbox are the two most popular platforms to purchase digital real estate. Okay, we'll get into some examples in a sec, um, but you'd, you'd be shocked, you know, what people are paying. Like, for example, land on Decentraland, uh, as of like a few weeks ago, was selling as high as $900,000 for 16 virtual acres. Um, some virtual plots are being sold for close to a million bucks, um, but you can get things for as low as like 10 bucks. Okay, so there's, there's a, a wide range of real estate you can buy digitally. Um, now the metaverse kind of opens this up to make it kind of interesting, right? We've all heard of the metaverse and what, you know, Facebook changed their name to meta. And you may have heard about um, the Oculus where you can, my kid's, um, you know, friend has it and you can, you know, punch Mike Tyson out and it looks kind of real. There's some cool stuff you can do on Oculus. And that's the whole idea, right? We're all going to kind of put these on in the future and you'll be able to, um, you know, mow the lawn and your digital real estate and, you know, hang out at the pool and uh, maybe walk up the stairs in your chateau, um, all digital, all on the metaverse, right? And metaverse, essentially a future um, advancement of the internet uh, we have today, right? Um, we, we've seen Microsoft, they've talked about this mesh where they're going to blend mixed reality and augmented uh, virtual reality, like on Microsoft Teams. Um, we've seen the, the digital uh, avatars, um, but it's taking the internet and taking it a step further with uh, you know virtual reality. What's an NFT? You know, non fungible token. Basically, it's unique. You can't replace it. Uh, you can use it for digital 
assets, like art, collectibles, games, uh, items. Also, it has utility like tokens. Okay, Ethereum blockchain allows developers to create smart contracts, which is part of the NFT um, foundation, and it's all driven by blockchain. That's the whole idea: is that you own this, you're the only one that owns it. You can follow the chain of ownership on blockchain. So if you look at Web 1.0, which is back in like the 90s, email, web domains, blogs, Web 2.0, you know, 2000s, we moved to social media, mobile apps. And now Web 3.0, which will be virtual parcels, digital currency, NFTs. That's the hope, right? Facebook changed their name to Meta. That's kind of where they're positioning themselves. So Web 3.0 and Metaverse can work closely together, right? For example, you can see a situation where, um, you know, you may be doing Zooms with uh, VR headsets, right? So you're kind of using your computer, using the internet, but you're using virtual reality. Um, you know, a digital creator may create some type of outfit for an avatar and, and or, or um, ability to decorate your house um, in the metaverse, right? So you're using an NFT, using some way to digitally uh, enhance the metaverse experience. So that's how the web 3.0 and metaverse, you know, can, can essentially uh, collide. So going back to digital real estate, and, and I'm going to just spend a few more minutes on this and then go into potential taxation. Can you buy it with an IRA, pros and cons, all that good stuff. But I, talk, I, I mentioned earlier that, you know, people are paying crazy amounts for this stuff. Um, I saw Snoop Dogg um, is replicating his California mansion on Sandbox, um, and someone paid 450000 bucks to be his neighbor. That's serious. And that's true. Price Waterhouse Coopers in Hong Kong purchased land on Sandbox, like an office. Um, a physical real estate company, the Metaverse Group, they paid $2.4 million to purchase a plot of land on Decentraland. So um, people are taking this serious. People want to get in early. Is this valuable? Like, is this worth doing? I don't know. <laughs> um, you know, it, I guess like physical real estate, uh, it's supply and demand. Um, you know, you can hold the asset, you can monetize it through uh, NFTs, blockchain. Um, it's easy to monetize it, easier to sell a digital asset than sell a physical house, right? You don't need a real estate agent, no closing. Like you can literally just sell it on a website and um, the, the gets transferred via crypto. And then you can just move the crypto to uh, fiat or, or US dollars. So um, that's that's a pro. Obviously, the, the con is, hey, you know, who's to say they can't just create more space on this platform, right? Um, and who's to say that people are going to, you stay on this platform, maybe they're going to buy uh, and start using a different platform. And maybe it's going to be the new hot area on the metaverse. And now you own a plot of digital real estate on a, uh, MySpace type website or um, platform that no one goes to anymore. So we'll see how this all connects. This is kind of first inning, maybe first pitch, first inning of the metaverse. So kind of risky to get in. If you pick the right piece of land on the right platform, you could hit it big or you just may have wasted your money. Um, no one really knows. Um, what are some of the pros? Obviously, you know, you diversify, you get it into an emerging asset. Um, you'll use blockchain technology, so it will be unique. It will be clear that you're the sole owner and you could capitalize on it quick by uh, selling it um, like on OpenSea and, and selling the, the actual ownership to that digital piece of real estate. The cons, well, that's obvious, right? Risk, volatility, security, you actually have to hold the cryptos, right? So there's risk on that. Um, and then the risk of, of the underlying Ethereum currency uh, that you're going to get when you sell it. So how do you buy it? Well, the first thing is you got to pick a platform, right? Whether it's Decentraland um, or, or someone else. Decentraland uses Mana, which is a pretty interesting crypto. Um, it's Ethereum powered blockchain uh, or a sandbox, whatever you want to use. You got to choose the storage method, right? So you purchase the digital real estate. Uh, you need to store the digital uh, NFT. And the most common platform, again, is decentralized and sandbox. And um, it requires a MetaMask extension to store the assets. You'll need to use MetaMask type wallet. And then you purchase your parcel, right? Just like basic real estate, you got to choose the right property. You make money when you buy it, not when you sell it. And, um, and then obviously you can you know, put it on OpenSea to sell, but it's not super hard to buy or sell. It's just super risky. Okay. So 
is there any tax on like digital real estate? Well, there's no digital property tax yet. That could change, I guess, down the road. So there's no uh, stamp tax or property tax when you buy or sell real estate. However, there could be, there is a federal income tax depending on how the digital real estate is treated. Is it a capital asset? Yeah, probably. Could it be deemed inventory? Maybe if you're a business in the business of buying or selling digital real estate, or is it a collectible, which is a higher long-term capital, ga capital gains tax rate at 28% versus 15 or 20% for a regular long-term capital asset? Um, it all depends, right? We don't know. There's very, very little guidance on the taxation of NFTs in general. Now, digital real estate, is it a collectible, right? And why is that important? Well, we know... IRAs cannot invest in collectibles. Section 408M, if you've watched my videos, listened to my podcasts, read my blogs, you know straight up that there's three things you can't do in an IRA. Can't buy life insurance, can't buy collectibles, like art, um, cards, baseball cards, stamps. There's a carve out under 408M for metals, bullion type gold, silver, palladium, American Eagle coin, state minted or bullion coins. But they all need to be held in physical possession of a depository. And then thirdly, you can't do a prohibited transaction outlined in Internal Revenue Code Section 4975, which basically means you can't self-deal or benefit in any way directly or indirectly from the IRA asset, You know, i.e. live in an IRA-owned home, okay? Or take your IRA and buy yourself a Rolex watch. Whatever your IRA does, it needs to exclusively benefit the IRA. So the first question is, is digital real estate a collectible? Um, we don't know. Okay. This is the definition of collectible. I'm taking this from the code. Any work of art, any rug, antique, any metal gem, stamp or coin with limited exceptions and alcoholic beverages, which is always a strange one, but this is the interesting part or any other tangible, doesn't say property. It says any other tangible personal property that the IRS determines is a collectible under the section. Okay. So is digital assets, is digital real estate tangible? No. What's the definition of tangible? It literally means anything that can be touched. Okay. It includes both real property and personal property. You can't touch digital real estate on the metaverse, sandbox, central line. You can't touch it. Okay. So what does that mean? Does that mean that a digital asset potentially not be deemed a collectible? Maybe. It's also very possible for the IRS just to change the language in section 408 to clearly outline NFTs, right? They can add, just like they added a, spec a specific line item like art or antiques, they can just say NFTs or digital assets. Today, they haven't, right? The way Washington works, probably not going to happen for a while. Um, the IRS has been very slow to react on any type of guidance for cryptos and taxation. The only real guidance we have goes all the way back to 2014. Okay, 2014-21, it's an IRS notice that really is the only um, public written offered statement on the taxation of cryptos. And that, that's eight years ago. A lot has happened in the last eight years, right? So we'll see where this goes. Um, there's zero guidance. But if you look at 408, um, you have some support because digital real estate is not a tangible property. So, you know, 408 seems to suggest that the IRS doesn't have the ability to even um, prescribe any intangible assets as a collectible. I don't know. This 408 was written a long time ago before anyone ever thought about intangible types of collectibles. Um, you know, back in the 70s and 80s, people collected baseball cards and stamps and antique cars and uh, things like that. They, they didn't think about a digital manifestation of real estate. That's just, you know, didn't exist. So we shall see. What does taxation mean? Well, if you own this outside an IRA, it's important if it's treated as a collectible. Why? Because the capital gains tax rate for long-term capital gains assets over 12 months is 28%. And again, there could be a 3.8% um, a sort of tax depending on your income. Um, so whereas if you have a regular capital asset, not a collectible, and you make less than 488,000 bucks, you pay 15% tax on the capital gains held longer than 12 months, more than 488, you pay 20%. So that 15 and 20 is less than the 28%. The 20% could also be subject to a 3.8% surtax. 
depending on your income, but 23 is still less than 31. Um, so the, the determination of whether a digital piece of real estate or an asset is a collectible is um, quite significant uh, and, and adds uh, potential tax liability to the investment. So it's super important. Unfortunately, there's not much guidance now that we uh, are aware of or, or have been given by the IRS. So what can you do? Well, um, again, even if, if guidance is provided down the road, I'm assuming uh, they'll either grandfather in or there'll, there'll be some period where you can um, exit out of, of that investment if you own it in an IRA uh, because there hasn't been any guidance in the past. I'm not sure. It, it can take years for any IRS guidance on the um, tax treatment of NFTs and whether it's collectible under 408. Um, retirement account legislation is not um, the hottest thing on the agenda for ways and means. Um, it's not something they're, they're extremely focused on. Yes, they are focused on helping people retire. We saw Secure Act 1.0 passed in December 2019. Secure Act 2.0, which should pass, it's in the Senate now for review, and then we'll go back to the House. And then some version of the House and Senate bills will go to the president to sign probably later this year. Um, there, there is movement in the retirement world, but to actually have specific legislation tackling cryptos, collectibles, NFTs, don't think we're going to see it for many years. So um, I guess buyer beware. Um, number one, obviously, there's risk, there's volatility, there's also uncertainty in the tax treatment. Is it a collectible? Is it just a capital asset? Of course, if you hold any capital asset less than 12 months, it's subject to ordinary income tax. Uh, but from an IRA standpoint, you want it to be treated as a capital asset. You do not want it to be treated as a collectible. And you also don't want to be deemed to be in a business of buying and selling digital real estate. Why? Because business income is subject to a tax known as unrelated business income tax, which would travel as high as 37%. So I assume the best way to get exposure to these types of uh, digital real estate assets, um, you, know, you can do one-off investments. Um, but again, there's no guarantee that the IRS won't come down and argue it's collectible. And if it's collectible, it can't be owned in an IRA. So then it's not just a tax issue. It's the issue of you know, is the IRA investment um, disqualified and subject to tax? I'm not sure. I, I do think that they will have some leeway in terms of getting people who have used an IRA in the past to purchase this asset, some way to exit it before being subject to disqualification uh, because it has not to this day been deemed a collectible. And Section 408 really just talks about tangible um collectibles right and then it has a, a clear statement that says the irs could prescribe as a collectible any other tangible personal property it doesn't say just property or real or personal just as tangible personal so here we're talking about intangible real property so you i think there's a good case to be made that 408 maybe would not apply to um digital real estate but again there's no clear-cut evidence or support from from the service at this point so there you go it's a pretty interesting area um obviously this will uh, coincide with the the value of cryptos the more popular cryptos get the more popular people want to use cryptos and decentralized investment models and blockchain technology to invest uh the next question is can you do it in an ira and then obviously that that answer turns on whether the digital real estate is deemed collectible as of today as i mentioned no support, no direct guidance, but there's some good arguments to be made that potentially it could be allowed because it's not a personal property uh, and it's not a tangible personal property that the IRS would seemingly have the authority to add to the list. So they'd have to amend 408 to give uh, them the ability to add an intangible asset like a digital NFT uh, to the list of collectibles. So there you go. But if you do buy personal as well it's it's up to you and your account i guess to decide if you're going to treat this as a collectible and pay up to 28 percent capital gains tax or argue it's not a collectible and then pay either 15 or 20 percent so that's that's also an issue whether you buy it in an ira uh, or not so hope you guys enjoyed today's podcast i know i did pretty cool topic 
um, always piques my interest and, in, you know, where the internet's going from 1.0 to 2.0 to 3.0 and, you know, how and what the economics will be of the internet 3.0 and hey, whether uh, Zuckerberg and Facebook made the right move by pivoting to meta um, and, and what does that mean for all of us and, and for investments like real estate in uh, a retirement account. So thank you again for spending some time with me today. I hope uh, you have a great rest of your day. Don't forget to check me out again next week. Take care and uh, be well. <music>